Hey everyone, today I'm back in Lost Ark with another Kakul Sail on Gate 3. Clear this time around on my Scrapper. Now, I was initially not planning on getting my Scrapper up to the level of Clown and just let us chill a bit more at item level 1445, but two of my friends that I raid with had an extra character to do Clown with, and they were a man short, and they also weren't really having much luck in Party Finder, so I said fuck it, I'll see which character has the most bound materials and I'll bring them up to the level of Clown. And that just happened to be my Scrapper. I was already planning on trying to get a third character up to 1490 in preparation for Belshaza, so that I could farm the new mats faster, so this just expedited that process a little bit. In preparation for Belshaza, I also decided to get my Scrapper 5 engravings, and I also changed her stat build a little bit. If you see my previous build videos, then you might remember that she used to be 6040 crit swift, but now I've switched over to full swiftness with one crit ring. Reasoning behind this is because I just felt like trying it out, and after trying it in Trixion, it did feel pretty good, and it also opened up some other engravings to me. Now, in the end, I ended up going for Taijutsu, Grudge, Adrenaline, Mass Increase, and Raid Captain. Looking back, I should have probably changed Raid Captain for Ambush Master or Cursed Doll because I'm not always going to get the full benefit of Raid Captain because I have that one crit ring. But even without running with a Yearning support, I was still able to get Fighter on all three gates of Kakul Sedon while the two other DPS players were about 15 to 30 item levels above me and they also had higher level gems as I'm still running around with level 5 gems as they're still in the process of being upgraded. So not too bad. And once my support switches over to the Yearning, set next week, my damage will go up as well. And then the difference between Raid Captain and let's say Curse Doll will be almost negligible I would imagine, as I then would get about 14.5% damage out of Raid Captain, out of the max of 18%, so I'm only going to be missing out on 3%. And then whenever I proc my Rage Rune, pick up a movement speed orb from the Drops of Aether from my support, or I end up being paired with a War Dancer or a Death Blade, who have a movement speed synergy, then I will be capping out my movement speed anyways. So it's a little bit more situational to get the maximum out of my Raid Captain, but if it starts to bother me in the future then all I have to do is switch out that one ring and that's it. The reason why I chose the crit ring is because I wanted to crit a bit more reliably and I thought that a more consistent crit rate would probably affect my damage more than missing out on 3% damage from the Raid Captain, because I wouldn't just be missing out on the damage of a critical hit, but I would also be losing out on the crit damage increase that my relic set provides. So that's kind of the thought process behind it. Is it the correct choice? I don't really know, but I certainly do enough damage for me to not care too much about it right now. Reason why I didn't go with Ambush Master is because it was more expensive, that's for one, and I also don't really trust myself to be hitting the back of the boss all the time. And if you're not hitting the back of the boss, then Ambush Master provides quite literally nothing to you. So that's why I didn't end up running it. Maybe once Ancient Gear rolls around and I'm more comfortable on the fights as a back attacking melee character, then I might change to it, but for now I will be sticking to this build and see how it goes. S4 Clown. I've now had the chance to clear it a few more times since I last talked about the raid and I must say that it's been pretty fun in general. Gate 1 and 2 are good fun and Gate 3 isn't as bad as it first was, although there are a few things that I really think shouldn't be allowed. Like for example you push the boss to 90 bars and then instead of going straight into showtime he decides to do 3 mechanics that include an HP swap or something. I feel like he should just go straight into showtime like he usually does. And there's a few other minor annoyances here or there as well. But in general, I do enjoy the raid a fair bit. This clear on my scrapper was also the first time that I did it without voice comms, because the other party members that I was running with were on Discord with one another, and I imagined that they were speaking in their native language as they're all friends, so I wasn't on Discord with them. But it did give me the opportunity to kind of experience the raid as party finder people would, and it certainly wasn't much different compared to being on voice chat with one another. In Gate 1, there's pretty much no communication required. In Gate 2, it's just a maze minigame that could be annoying, but seeing how they were screen sharing, the scouter would just ping my locations for me, and then that was that. And in Gate 3, you also don't really need any communication. We just had one guy in charge of the bingo pings, and that's about it. So outside of the maze from Gate 2, it's certainly not that bad, and even then, you have a lot of time for the maze, so you could just take things a little slower, and you'd still be more than fine. 
Overall, it was a good experience to do this without voice chat and also do it on minimum item level for once, because as I'm getting more owls to 40, 90 in the future, they might end up doing this raid on minimum item level as well. So I already got a taste for that. And doing it on an actual melee class was also quite good because it made me approach certain mechanics in a different way. And I've now also figured out a bunch of new stuff and places where I'll be able to have a better time keeping uptime on the boss, hitting the bag, or just be able to dodge a mechanic while keeping damage uptime. Whereas that's something that I didn't really care about too much when I was doing it on my sorceress, for example, because she does have that very long range to keep damage uptime. So it's been a good learning experience overall. And I'm sure that I'll be figuring out more things as the weeks go by. And then my enjoyment of the raid will go up as well. Because I've said it many times before, but figuring out a raid completely in Lost Ark takes a little while. And once you've figured out all the little intricacies, then it's very satisfying to execute on that knowledge that you've gathered over those multiple clears. And that is why I love raiding in Lost Ark so much. But I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say in this video. There's still some more gameplay left, so I'm just going to leave you with the rest of it. So I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Protect you.
to finish this. That doesn't count! It doesn't! <laughs> this is the real start! 